Hey lads, well I thought I'd make a, a random video which I thought would be helpful uh, and I'm sure like 10 bajillion people have just made a video like this but I want to do my own picks and what am I talking about? Yeah, you read the title of the video, so cliche, whatever. <laughs> uh, here's my picks of uh, servicing tools. Well, servicing and restoration tools. No particular order, just whatever I've got in my little bag of tools and stuff. And what I think would be useful that I don't think I hope you want to talk about. Now, lubrication. This is an oiler pen, which is out of frame. Here it is. It's a cheap one I got on eBay. And I think, actually, the listing I got, because I was trying to find the cheapest, uh, I got two. This one, I, I, they were both containing the same oil or whatever, but this one, what? No, this one had the same oil as this. I don't know what type of oil it was. It was very an ominous listing because like it was the only thing that the person was selling and I was a bit worried that I was just getting my £3.50 stolen and I'd never get any oilers. But this one ran out first and I, fit it, I filled it with a three-in-one oil. Now that's good for old locos and maybe some like what two thousands engines, but modern day engines, eh, it's a bit too dirty and greasy for them. Because I don't really want to imagine having a bunch of like three in one oil chucked into a modern uh, loco into like an Acura scale night class ninety two. Hey, that's a modern uh, model I've just referenced. Means my video is relevant. <laughs> Um, but I think a cleaner version you could use is like Singer sewing machine oil. I haven't got any, but I've heard it's like pretty good. It's pretty clean, more clean than like uh, three in one oil, which I've got a bottle of it here, which I just keep at home because it's a bit too big to fit in the, uh, the bag. And this is just a traveler size, I'll say. But you don't need to have an oil a pen. You could have like a little pot of oil. And like something like, I don't know, a, uh, oh, like a bit of wire on something that's ergonomic. This isn't ergonomic. This is like for my fingertips and it really hurts. You can't really see it actually. There we go. But that, you just need a tiny bit of oil on the end just to put into the bearings and the crank pins and stuff. So no wear could happen. Uh, but yeah. Any oil, I guess, really works. There's lots of different types of uh, loco oil. Um, there's like thick stuff for like gears. There's uh, stuff that could go through electrical current for like if you've got pickups for the bearings. I don't know how that works. It's a bit daft to me. Why can't kind of just have wiper blades? And uh, there's just like normal sewing machine oil. That you could just get for cheap on eBay. I think if you search for an oiler pen, that's like what? Just search for oiler pen, no model railway tags. Usually they come up underneath like the watch maintenance. Like watches. You remember watches? <laughs> Back in that day. <laughs> um, they usually come up for like what? Three quid under the watch name? Uh, category? I don't know. But yeah. Oil is the most important, but also so is grease. Here is a big lummox tube of white lithium grease I found on eBay, which I got for a dabble. Um, you could get a big, massive, like lifelong tube like this. Like, look at that. That's whatever that is in uh, English. <laughs> uh, from like a tenner. I think I got. I found a specific listing. For like seven quid, but then they just charged it up to like ten quid. But yeah, a big tube like this is really good. And white lithium grease, I I believe, is the best grease you can get for a loco. It just sticks to the gears and it doesn't fling off anywhere. Like a good amount in opinion and a, a, a worm gear and opinion gear or whatever, just like it quiets it down, especially like an old X04, X03, whatever motor. Like this B12 used to be absolutely rattly, but 
because I think it's got an XO3 motor because it's got like the plastic gears or whatever. Um, yeah, some white lithium grease on there and onto the worm and let that bed in. And I think some oil as well. It just runs so nicely, so quietly. It actually sounds like the later M type motor, I think. But of course, it's an old XO4, and I like XO4s because they're very mechanical. And uh, imagine building a motor that's actually not disposable, and they go for like stupid tw money on eBay. But yeah, I highly recommend this grease. And if you can find it on eBay, I mean, you can. It's like what sixty million listings of this. It's a tenner, guys. Get it? It's better than paying like what five quid for a little tiny little makeup pot of half decent waxy grease i'm just making up insults and excuses because i've never tried it but this lasts like i think i've only used about that much so far and i've still got a big chunk of some oh why did i stroke it like that <laughs> why did i stroke it i've got like a big chunk of amount still stuck in here that's gonna last me till i get gray hairs uh but when you get too much grease on your wheels and and you pickups because you've been a bit of numpty and you've absolutely dipped it in a bath of oil and grease you're going to need something to clean it with ipa this i found in my local auto shop that i don't really check into because it's on an awkward side of the road and i just think uh yeah, i don't really bother but i'm glad i did actually bother because using this cleans this is meant to clean your wheels your pickups and anything electrical because of course it's an electrical cleaner as you could tell pure alcohol for cleaning optical and electronic equipment um a bit of that on a cotton bud uh running the model just clean just like clean the wheel while it's turning over it's just brilliant it's also good for cleaning up uh commutators on old motors and the brushes too so, because you can actually uh, give them maintenance. Oh, yeah, I should actually say, oil, uh, put that in your bearings, like your motor bearings, actually. Just a dab of oil in your motor bearings, uh, your wheel bearings, axle bearings, <laughs> even in coach and wagon bearings. Yes, those need oil and actually a bit of grease, too. Like, just a little dab of grease on each into the pinpoint axle runs smoothly and stops your drag and all that nonsense you can put a bit on coupling hooks too like on old uh trying couplings actually lets the arm of the of the hook of the coupling to raise up rather than get stuck and then you have to go around the whole layout backwards trying to couple up to it but it's refusing or whatever but yeah that to clean up your commutators and your electrical components that's good but also, I think, as well, a bit of contact cleaner. This I also got from the auto shop. It's very good. Um, I think I'd recommend doing it outside, but I think you can do it indoors in a well-ventilated space. It evaporates quickly. Uh, cleans. It, it does the same as IPA, but like with a blast, like a WD-40 blast. But don't use WD-40, of course. It just cleans all the muck and grease off of like old wheels and uh, it actually frees up gummed up chassis because I had a trying princess chassis that I think I showed in my last video that was absolutely gummed up and a squirt of this as a test, it ran so freely, of course with a bit more oil, it ran absolutely perfect and I was so pleased. But this is safe for motors, like old motors, again, if you're going to service them. Dip the brushes in like a little canister of this and let it just like, or do it like the double O bill way and just like absolutely shake it and then uh, let it soak in. But yeah, that also helps with getting the grime off of commutators and helps them tick over nicely. You don't need anything abrasive like a fiberglass pencil because what I've learned is that attracts more dirt with the micro scratches into the into the metal which actually brings me on to my next thing uh where is it fiberglass pencil this i recommend to people who are a bit more experienced not for well i don't really exp um 
recommend it to everyone because it's fiberglass and these little fibers break off when of course when you're like trying to clean something and if you don't have like a paper towel or you're wearing like rubber gloves and clean up your surface afterwards they get everywhere and they jab on your fingers i remember servicing a lot of old engines like all at once and i used this to clean off all the hardened crap that i couldn't get with a any of the ipa or whatever um this just jabbed into my fingers and it was so uncomfortable trying to sit here plucking them out with a pair of fine tweezers. But this is good for cleaning off, like, uh, corrosion, I suppose. And dirt. Uh, I usually use it to clean off corrosion and, like, wear on uh, Lima uh, pickup spring things. Like, on the, pick on the diesels, they've got, like, this pickup spring that goes to, like, the non-powered bogey. Just to shine up a bit. That's all I really use it for these days. Because it's just a pain. In my fingers. And it's not very comfortable. And it makes a mess too. Just a fiberglass mess all over your desk. If you haven't got like a paper towel. Uh, what else? I mentioned. Oh, Is there anything I could actually talk about? Like power and all that. Cotton buds. I don't think I need to really explain. Because I already did. Like... These are good. Look, this one's even had, like, what, a mile put into it. It's still got a few miles left on the other end. But, yeah, this is good for just putting some IPA on it and then running over the wheels and cleaning them. And there you go. Cleans your wheels. You can also use some cotton pads. I, I sometimes use these for cleaning the wheels as well. Gets a bit more dirt off. And these last a bit longer because there's more cotton on there, of course. And I think you could try and clean the track of it if you cover it in, like, what, contact cleaner and just go over the rails? I don't know. I never really tried it. Um, as for powering up your engines, I usually use, like, an old controller to turn them over. I actually use that crappy Hornby silver box that uh, has a, a fit every time it wants to, like, it overloads. And it's like, you know, you have to wait, like, five working days for it to stop to actually get over its blooming trip. And it's short circuit or whatever. But also, if you need to be like mobile somewhere, because I don't think you really want to carry control everywhere, a 9 volt battery. It's good to just put it against the wheel terminals and just let it or the motor tick over and see if it's working without having to set up a, your layout or set up a controller. Like, it's a bit more wasteful because when it runs flat after like going through a model that charges, well, it takes out so much power. Um, yeah, <laughs> just takes so much power. It just like it runs flat and it goes into recycling, but it's good. It's very good. I don't think my sense has even made any sense. You could also use like I got this because I actually put a bit of a 9 volt onto an O-gauge loco because I want to turn that over as well but I got a little plug with some wires on it and I put it over the wheels or the motor terminals just to watch it tick over see if it works uh, what else I don't think I really need to explain it track rubber this one's a bit has a few miles put into it it's a bit of a hit and miss sometimes. I usually recommend a track rubber for like track that is absolutely like just covered in like months of filth, like a model shop track. Uh, it's good to just absolutely scrub all that crap off because it just cuts through it quickly. But yeah, it's a bit of hit and miss sometimes with a track rubber. What else? screwdrivers now here's my lucky little like knockoff meccano crosshead i use because it's very ergonomic and it gives me not a grip with this uh head here oh there we go focused and the actual end fits in a lot of screws that i have to use it on so this is good if you've got a nice screwdriver you can get a lot of grip on you could use a screwdriver set as well but whatever works for you i guess Speaking of, I got one right here. 
I found this somewhere. I really can't remember where I found it. In the probably in the garage or something. But it's just a cheap little set. Th these are good, but they haven't got enough like ergonomic grip for you to actually put some torque into like a certain screw, where you just end up slipping on this metal uh, handle. I also got a flathead as well, but I think you already know what that looks like. A pair of tweezers. Especially very fine pointy ones like this. These are really good. I use these for decals or transfers or picking up tiny pieces of well detail or I suppose I use it for holding in brushes when I put them back into a motor or tiny screws. But yeah, something Fine and pointed like this, just to hold on to something while you're servicing it or working on it. These are good. Also, we're servicing a side rod spanner of some sort. Now, I know Expo Tools does like a big tool set for like 20 quid, but I haven't got that. So I've got this little Hornby one, which usually does like Hornby nuts and uh, crank pins on their models. It's got two different sized ends. Sometimes these work on other models, if you're lucky, if it fits in the same, like, diameter of the holes. But I think the cheapest I've seen these go for was, like, three quid at the Great Electric Train Show. These usually retail for, like, what, seven quid? But these are good tools. But I think I would recommend getting the Expo Tools one because it comes with more, you know, with more uh, sizes. And it's got a better ergonomic grip. Uh, what else? Of course, super glue. If you need to glue like a piece of detail that's fallen out, just a little dab of this, either from the bottle on the little nozzle or on the end of a paper clip. It's good to just like dab it in with a bit of glue and then glue your detail on that you need to repair or something like that. What else have I got in here? Permanent markers, they're good for, well, if you need to mark something on a layout or on a part or a loco or such. I think it's really self-explanatory what they do. Ah! Electrical tape is good for insulating on motors. I, I talk about a lot of motors or stuff, but, like, it, you know, it's useful. This is good for if you need to isolate something like, I don't know, the motor on a white metal kit loco because one of the terminals is touching the white metal body and it's shorting out the whole thing. Put this inside of the loco body, like a, a strip of this, or you could paint the inside of the body maybe, or just put this over the top of the motor which keeps shorting it out. Uh, jobs are good. Un. An old toothbrush. This helps out to clear off any dirt and fluff on loco wheels, bodies, uh, and other pieces. Works well dry, but also wet with, like, if you give it a, a loco body a bath in some, uh, well, warm water with a bit of fairy liquid on the end of this and just scrub the body and let it dry, it gives it an absolutely satisfying clean. Baby wipes do work if you want to be a bit more delicate with the body, but that takes ages and sometimes it doesn't really clean it well and it leaves water streaks everywhere. And it's just... It's good, but I prefer this, even if it does take off decals and stuff on some models because they've rotted away. Um, What else? Pencils. Again, that's the same with pens, if you need that to mark something. Ah! It's kind of the same as... The toothbrush, but a dusting, a makeup brush thing. This nice fluffy one I got, this really helps dusting off bodies on uh, locos. And it's nice and soft, so it's not going to affect the paintwork, of course. And honestly, looking through my box of tools, other than the stuff I've just said. Ah, no, one more thing. Something magnetic. Here's a magnetic pickup tool I've got which is usually used for, like, the auto trade. But this could hold on to, uh, I don't know, probably pieces of handrail, or pick up something from the floor 
that you've lost because maybe you've got like a carpet and you've dropped a bit of handrail hoping this is it's magnetic this could pick it up for you and i think one more tool i could recommend other than scissors is pliers oh also craft knives as well actually i should say i've just noticed what i looked over but yeah craft knives you would need that to cut things and stuff but i also use just a normal unboxing like stanley blade thing to cut up transfers and open boxes and um well cut bits off of bodies but craft blades are good pliers it's my last tool i think i'm going to mention these are some uh bent ones which are good for holding in also holding in brushes a bit better when putting them into a an xo4 motor or something or uh, bending a coupling hook back into place or coupling rods any pliers are good even like the snippy ones if you need to cut off like a, a bit of sprue on a model um oh god i'm trying to think of things while unscripted but these are good for holding things that aren't gonna work with the tweezers they're a bit more they've got a bit more grip to them and they the jaws hold stuff better Oh, I keep thinking of new tools now, actually, while I'm talking about this. Uh, while I go back to the craft blade, if you've got, like, Lima engines, they usually got, like, bits of sprue on the gears. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, using a bit of... What? The fuck am I talking about? Um, <laughs> using a craft blade... And cutting off the bits of sprue in the gears, like usually in the teeth, there's a bit of plastic that is just lodged in between the teeth. Or one of the teeth has got a bit of sprue in it, it's too long. This is good to just cut it off, and hopefully the gears run much better with the model. Like, I had a Lima Delta, well I've got a Lima Delta that needs repainting. But it had such a seized motor because it was so covered in sprue. I chopped and like trimmed all that sprue bits off and it runs absolutely quiet and smooth it is like one of my best running lima engines i've got in the collection it's amazing i don't even know how or why but it just runs so nicely uh there's another tool i was thinking of other tools i could think of that i just remembered uh little pots and trays sometimes uh Magnetic ones help too, but this is a little like I think like a little brass ash ashtray of a uh, dolgok that I found somewhere. I think probably a car boot, but I polished it up. Uh, these are good for holding pieces, like just coupling hooks and buffers while you're repairing or servicing an engine, so they don't go missing. Sometimes a little box. Like this cotton bud box I use to isolate some of my electrical bits in my little toolkit is good too because they won't go flying. And you can put a lid on it so you make sure it doesn't go flying. But yeah, those are useful. Um, what else? Tire weights. These are usually used for cars. They come in like 5 or 10 gram strips or squares. You can find them cheaply on eBay. I think you get like a hundred for 20 quid or something. But that and also any type of lead weight, like just lead flashing, is good to add into a loco. Especially Hornby 040s I found because I've got like so many of them. Putting some in the boiler or under the cab or under the tank or in the saddle tank or in the side tanks or whatever helps with traction immensely weight into a very light loco really helps with the traction and i can't stress that enough you could get deluxe materials liquid gravity 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 um i haven't tried this yet but i've seen a few people make like little boxes out of plastic card and just stick some of this in there and glue it in with pva glue that helps with traction a lot um Trying to think if there's any more I need to talk about. 
blue tack or black tack. Anything that could hold on like some, a part that you don't want to be permanent, but can still be held on anyway within reason with blue tack because you don't want this to be sticking on handrails, of course. But this could stick in like cab crew that you don't want to fit in. I mean, PVA glue could help as well. Just stick it in there and it's easy to break off as well if you're careful and not accidentally break it off. But this helps holding like... Well, if you're doing Thomas stuff, you could you use this to fit on faces and the such. But yeah, that's one good thing. Rubber bands, uh, those are good too. To when If you're trying to like glue a body to a chassis because, well, the screws or something have gone absolutely cack and you can't repair it. Uh, this could hold the body and the chassis together. Plastic sprue from kits is also good for making... Um, uh, I mean, uh, screw posts for for like bodies. Oh God, let me show you a bit. See, I need that visual representation. Otherwise, I'm just talking out my ass. But here's like a half done sprue of like a kit of some sort. But like sprue like this, keep this around because you could use this for repairs of old loco bodies that well have lost their mounting post. Or screw post or whatever. Drill a hole that's smaller in here. And then you fit your screw. Well, glue this to the body as well. Where you want it to go. And this works. Because you've just got plastic rod. That you don't need to pay like whatever for. Because you've got so many kits. Uh, metal wire and all that stuff. I'm talking about stuff that's for like restorations. And like, oh god. Um, I'll cut it here short. Because I'm sure there's other people who could tell me. Uh, other stuff in the comments but wire that's good for replacing like old wire on pickups and such just like here here's a little piece of like just small gauge wire that could work for uh, going from the motor to the pickups on an extra bogey or something and finally a servicing cradle you could use a sponge or some or something cheaper that holds your loco in but you'd want something nice and soft that could hold your loco body firmly, but not like absolutely so firm it's going to ruin the body. I've seen so many people just jab the blooming bodies against a hard table while trying to open it up. And it's so uncomfortable because you just know it's going to break at some point. The loco, not the table. <laughs> or it's going to damage the paintwork. Get a nice cradle... Or make one out of a sponge, like get a foam cutter or something, and or some foam, yeah, a bit of foam. Build a little cradle in a box, and just hold your loco bodies in here, or your chassis, and jobs are good. And you don't need to jab it against the table and hold it up like a idiot. You you only got two hands, mate. Just use some initiative or whatever. Right, I've been going off for half an hour talking about servicing tools and how to rest restore locos and look at all this junk I put on the table so I hope this has been helpful and hopefully some people in the comments will try and correct me on stuff I've been wrong about uh, but I think I've mentioned everything that I could think of for restoring or servicing locos so with that thank you for watching I'll see you in the next video I suppose yippee